Juicy Co-Creators, Lilu here from beautiful, delicious, sunny California with Dr. Farmer. How are you? Good, Lilu. Thanks. Thanks. It's awesome. What a beautiful beach. Uh, you can't go wrong with this. You know, if you look around, it's just an amazing beach. One of the best in Southern California, I think. What's the name? Uh, Three Arch Bay. It's Three Arch Bay. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And a beautiful place to talk about nature and the animals. And I noticed there's a boat in the background. I don't know if you can see it, but that's chasing dolphins now. They are chasing. They're trying to find dolphins. Okay. It's a boat that goes out of uh, Dana Point. Oh, to so swim with them. If huh? we're lucky, we might see some dolphins in the background. So if you've got some dolphins, let us know, okay? But still listen to this conversation because it might be really handy. Uh, I just flew in yesterday from Orlando always looking after the next inspirational message and I know you're working on some new things last time we spoke of spirit animals what are you the different books that you wrote and there's oracle cards there's all kind of thing yeah. but I want to talk about the the Stephen Farmer the, the the new one awakening up and what he's working on but tell us again the the magic earth magic and well earth magic uh, came out about a year and a half ago plus the earth magic oracle cards and then as I mentioned uh, and people can go to my website to find more, but children's spirit animal cards for children, uh, children's products have, I've been called to do, and, and there's also a CD with children's spirit animal stories. And what I'm working on, and I've been working on for a year, is a book proposal, and I'm about to finish it and submit it, on healing ancestral karma. And it's basically about mending unhealthy family patterns, patterns that have shown up in previous generations, of which we may carry some of that still, most likely we do carry that karma. And karma in this sense means something that, that is both uh, genetically programmed, is not the best word, but that's close. It's genetically programmed, but it's also in our, in our DNA, it's also a soul patterning. And the idea of the, uh, the book is first off to encourage people to connect with ancestors. We don't do that a lot in our Western culture. You know, grandma and grandpa. You know, it's pretty much, we don't even think of them as ancestors. So we're talking about both the ancestors of this land that we may not be, uh, that may not be in our lineage, but the ancestors certainly in our lineage, and um, also um, of other geographies, other lands. I have a friend, a shamanic colleague who's uh, very, very strongly connected to Africa and some of her teacher's ancestral lineage in Africa, for instance. Mm, are we also talking of animals too? Animals and ancestors? We are in certain indigenous, well, first off, many, many cultures throughout the world deal with ancestors in some way. I've been in uh, the, far, uh, the Middle East and, and there's altars to ancestors. Uh, certainly I've been in Australia and Hawaii and that's where the animals come in. Uh, the, the old Hawaiian spirituality, which is very similar to some of the original people of Australia, that I've come in contact with have a, a different way of looking at or thinking about ancestors. The, when you die, in the old Hawaiian spirituality, your soul goes to a land called Po. Po is a land where you hang out with the big gods and goddesses. The Akua is what they are. And after you've stayed there for a while, you develop mana, mana. power. Yeah. Life force. Life force, power. Yeah. And when you've acquired enough power, you then come back and express through the physical, or through some of the physical elements of the land, the animals, particularly, and the plants, so that uh, uh, grandma may be coming back and her lineage the ancestral lineage might be showing up as a certain flower or a certain animal. And when it's an animal, it's your, and you're connected to that lineage, that animal is your ama kua. Uh -huh. That's your guiding ancestral spirit. Pueo, owl. S the story in Hawaii about pueo, the Hawaiian owl, is that if it's your ama kua, they will help you and guide you. And I know a fella, his ama kua was pueo, the owl. And he said, uh, late at night, one time, he was coming back from the far side of the island, and, um, and uh, Pueo followed him all the way, as if he were guiding him. The other so side of that is if you, if you see Pueo in an unusual way, it portends a death. <laughs> so, and it's not your power animal, your spirit animal. 
So that's, that's how animals get connected. But that's also because they're, uh, the, uh, the part people, of us too, and it's all linked. Huh? Yeah, the, pe the people have lived on the land, you know, for uh, their, their lineage goes back, 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 sometimes thousands of years, particularly in Australia. So naturally, the spirit is part of the land, and the ancestral spirits are showing up through different animals and plants. It's, it's a given. It's just, we don't even think that way, but it's a given in these lands. Come a little closer here, because I just want to make sure we get carried away. You're, you're going, you're drawn to the animated. ocean. Yes, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, that's true. The ocean, this Aren't is where you live. This? Oh, yeah, and the ocean speaks to us. <laughs> uh, I've had uh, uh, the other experiences with animals and ancestors, especially uh, of previous generations, is a friend of mine who told me about um, her father had passed, had died, and... Um, that same day later on, after she attended the memorial, she was walking along the ocean, not this particular beach, walking along the ocean, and a, do a lone dolphin was tracking her. Oh. And immediately she knew that it was a courier from her father, as if saying, honey, I'm okay. And birds will come, you know, from deceased relatives. They will show up, and, and somebody will just know that that's my mom or my dad's either... Well, some people think it's mom or dad. I think it's a courier. It's like a messenger from the afterlife. So there's, no, partic so there's no particular animals that represents that? No, that no, it's no. a message from ancestors? It could be coming from any... Right. For deceased loved ones, um, specifically deceased loved ones, often it's birds, but not always, like the friend with the dolphin. Uh, for what I was talking about with the indigenous people, who it could be any, any particular animal... Uh, my, uh, a friend of mine, Jeremy, his grandfather in Australia uh, of the Gukoyalaji tribe in northern Queensland, his father's, um, you could say Amakua, although that's Hawaiian, his father's spirit guide, ancestral spirit guide, is a black cockatoo. And his experience and belief is he w would not travel unless he got a sign from a black cockatoo, for instance, as if an ancestor was saying to him, okay, it's safe now, you can travel. So I love how, so you actually, you, so you're okay? Yeah, I'm okay. I just a little tickle. <laughs> but it's, it, it, so it's this communication, it's getting their messages. That's what we're talking about here. That's what you're talking in your book, getting these messages and kind of working with the spirit, the ancestral, these ancestors through spirit, through those well, signs <laughs> daily, instead of making those choices kind of unconsciously. Right, that our ancestors want to help us in some They're watching. way. They're that's here. the idea. They're with us. It's not something that's uh, common to our culture, and I feel like I'm on a mission to make it more common, that we can, especially during these earth changes, the changes, the shifts that are going on in the, in, uh, the earth and in our relatedness to the earth. These, unlike, let's say, archangels who've never walked on this land, have never really lived on this land, and yet still are valuable allies, spirit allies, the ancestors, those who've come before, have actually experienced being human. You know, they've known the joys and the suffering of being human. Um, sometimes in a workshop, we'll call on what we call the grandmothers and grandfathers with a calling song. Um, if I'll do a short version of it. Grandfathers, grandfathers, we are calling. Grandfathers, grandfathers, we are calling. Come, come, come. And then repeat that several times, and then we'll do the grandmothers. In fact, I think they just showed up here. Yeah, I just felt I just it too. Call. Yeah, yeah, isn't that fun? Isn't that? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, we're surrounded now. Yeah, we are. I, I get chills. And, uh, that tells me either. I isn't felt that, it. Isn't that, isn't that cool? Yeah, I hope we, I wish we could. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, interesting. It's okay, Lilo, I'll take over from here. <laughs> No, and I, I say that as a demo. You have a message, yeah. I say that as a demo, you know, <laughs> but it, it really, it works. They are, I, I get from my work in my meditations and shamanic journeys, uh, they want to help us. The, the, the spirit animals want to help us. They, they know that we've been misaligned in our relationship with our incredible planet. Mm -hmm. um, I feel they're embracing us, like here right now. I feel the embrace. I feel like we're here. Yes. We're pro we're we're giving you our, our love, and you're not alone. And very good. No, that's very good. That's that's often the feeling we get, and just the assurance that there are those spirit guides who have come before, 
who have actually walked, have, have, like we are, you know, our feet on the ground here, um, our, our head in the sky, enjoying the sun, enjoying the variety and the incredible diversity of this wonderful planet. And yes, it's, uh, it's harshness too. You know, nature, in a sense, nature doesn't care, but that does not not care. Yeah. Nature just is. Yeah. And we gotta get used to, <laughs> we gotta get used to that. And again, appreciate what the gifts nature does give to us, the natural world does give mm -hmm. to us. Because we have also lived on this earth, maybe with some of these ancestors, maybe not. But we have our own karma, right? We have our own experience on earth. Yes. Um, in, in some systems, they be, uh, the belief is that we've had lives before. And I'm, I'm still uh, working this one out. I'm wondering, okay, it's more of a question now than, a, than I can say with some uh, definite uh, statement. Maybe when we're talking about past lives, maybe, just maybe, it's a cellular connection mm -hmm. to an ancestral spirit that is emerged into our consciousness in some way when we do a past life regression. And we call it past life regression. Maybe. Interesting, yeah. It's a different take yeah, it's on it. Interesting thought, yeah. yeah. Anyway, so I'm, I'm really big on uh, encouraging, first off, encouraging people to connect with ancestors. Uh, there's in this uh, uh, book, there will be uh, processes that people can do to connect with ancestors and more importantly to heal some of the life negative karma that's with them. I was writing about this in uh, uh, just yesterday about my father. Uh, my father was a hard worker. He really took good care of his family. And I must say that's something that's with me. And I, I can say with some uh, pride Yeah, I'm a hard worker, and I do my best to take care of the people that I'm closest to in my family. On the other hand, one of the, one of the life negative traits and characteristics he carried with him is he never, he went to his grave never thinking that he mattered, mm. that he really affected other people. I confronted him one time about this, but I think he still never really, he just was kind of doing his thing and never felt. And I recognize that for many years I felt the same way about myself. Uh, well, it doesn't matter what I do. I don't really affect other people. And I, I believe that's cured now. <laughs> I get it. Um, like the story I told you earlier about the tree roots. You know, I don't know how many people I affect. I just do my work and do my service and uh, let it go. Uh, and people will be affected however they're affected. And when you release that for yourself, you kind of release it for your dad and other generations. Very well stated. I couldn't say, I couldn't say it better. And that's that's part of this... As, as I, uh, one of my favorite, and the only one I really remember from the Course in Miracles statements is, when I am healed, I am not healed alone. Mm. And when we apply it to the, what we're talking about here, it's really true. As my descendants, I know, I've done these processes where I know that, say, my grandson, who's eight years old now, will not have to carry, let's say, the legacy of what I just described. He will not have to carry some of the other elements that I've worked with to, to heal. Mm. And I, I'm extremely grateful for that yeah. and to be guided to do this sort of work and to be able to offer it to other people as well. And that gives extra courage to go through those hard patches too and those things that are really there, uh, there within us and we have sometimes it comes back, it keeps on coming back and back again. And that would be the main message I would want people. You can heal this stuff. You don't have to carry it with you and you don't have to pass it along to the yes, you. generations. <laughs> yeah, me, you too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, all of us. It's not for some kind of destined uh, group or anything like that. No, it's not fate. Fate has this, uh, well, even the term fatalistic, that's the root word, fate. It's like we're, you know, this is what we got, this is what we're going through, you know, and it doesn't matter what I do. No, I want to say, and that's part of what my um, desire is, is to um, empower people. Uh, you, can, you can heal. I, I, again, I, I was pretty messed up as a kid. As I th look back on it, I go, my God. But I look at the layers and layers and layers that I've peeled off, both from the psychological work and, and uh, in the last several years, the shamanic work, uh, my particular spiritual path, how that's helped me clear a lot of stuff out of the way and to recognize I'm an imperfect human being. But that's pretty darn perfect. And It'll never own. be done. It's a journey, right? <laughs> Absolutely. It's not an, an destination. Yeah. It's not a, you awaken, it's the awakening process. Yeah. We go to sleep, we wake up. We go to sleep and we wake up again and again and again. 
Because you went, I mean, you traveled around the world, you did so many healings, all of that, and yet you're you're at this stage of, of you're still reinventing yourself. You still have to question and to call back spirit. And there's some of these days where you're not you're not so connected too. I mean, we need to hear that because so many of us kind of are giving up sometimes or have have lived a certain um, yeah. a, a certain peak, you know, in this evolution, and then all of a sudden we we maybe got back into a comfort zone, and it's time to you know get feel it again and no that's why I, I i i know that um i think what we got to stop doing is idealizing spiritual teachers yeah. and of any sort mm -hmm. what's the old book that was out years ago in the 70s if you meet the buddha on the road kill him that's kind of harsh but you know you don't want to kill him but point being yeah. i think in that i never read the book but i think the point was is don't you know, you can look to, I still look to teachers, of course. I look at teachers all around, the nature, other people, etc., yourself, uh, listening, paying attention. Uh, I will always be open to teachings. I always will be. But this idea of trying to be perfect or ideal in some way for anyone, let alone spiritual teachers, I'm not a, like I said, I'm an imperfect human being, and if I step back, well, that's perfect. You know, the, the paradox of that. And, um, we keep on learning. I'm going to, I'm going to learn and teach. I'm never going to retire. I know that, you know, I just, I, I don't see that. And I'm a hard worker. I love, I love the work that I do. I'm blessed to do it. And I go to sleep you know, every so often I'll get forgetful or I'll get grumpy. Oh, was it just yesterday that happened mm -hmm. or no, it was this morning. Yeah. I got kind of grumpy, <laughs> you know, and I, it, it's just like, oh, it passes. The thing is when we do this spiritual work, it doesn't hang on. Yeah. Somebody you know. shows up or a bird shows up. Or a little niggle in the mind or a spirit guide of some sort, you know, or that voice, the inner voice goes, is this really that important? You know, Jessica, my wife and I, we'll, we're pretty good at getting past stuff. You know, we go into like any relationship, uh, we'll go into some conflict or something or she's in a bad mood uh, uh, or I'm in a bad mood, but we don't hang on to those things. It's like, let's dive under that and see what we can do to clear it. Or grief, you lose something or someone, you know, you lose someone precious to you. Are you going to grieve? Or are you going to do a spiritual bypass? No, I say if you're going to grieve, get on the floor, roll up, curl up into a ball, get the Kleenex nearby, and just let it go, let it rip. And then when you're done, after a few minutes, get up and walk outside. Yeah. Go luck and get some fresh air. You know, go go hug a tree. <laughs> you know, do something to change it. But don't be afraid of that. That I don't even want to say darker side of humanness, but the 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 the, the if yeah, you're the in shadow pain, side. If you're, yeah, if you're in pain, ha be, have the pain. But don't suffer. Yeah. Dive in, feel it. <laughs> yeah, feel it, then move on, and yeah. then go talk to God, however God shows up to you. Mm. <laughs> you know, whether it's in the trees or an animal or a friend, especially a friend. Like, I've got a few mates that um, I turn to, you know, men in my life. I'm very grateful that long-term friendships that if I'm, I'm hurting or something, I'll go talk to them. I've got a wife I can talk to, you know. I mean, and especially I believe, and this is a, an aside, but... Men need men. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> women are really good at that for the most part, you know, finding other women to process stuff. But what men are a little less, are a little more reticent to do that. But I've done a lot of men's meetings, groups, etc. And I want to encourage men, you know, reach out to a brother. You know, you're, you're having trouble, reach out to a brother. They inspire me. You know, they help me remember where I'm pointing. You know, remember my heart. Remember to be open to it. Remember love. Remember gratitude. All those things we've taught over the years when we're in this arena, other people help us remember. The trees help us remember. The spirit animals that visit us to, with messages help us remember. Beautiful. Let's, I would love to finish on 2013 because this is uh, probably by the time this video is online, it'll be 2000 and end of 2012, maybe 21st of December, we have already maybe this video. No, <laughs> kidding, but uh, who knows what's going to happen. But <laughs> let's talk about 2013. How does it feel? Uh, 2013, I feel very, uh, I would say very positive about 2013. I, I think what's um, dangerous is, and we'll see it in the media, like there's, there's been talk about this fiscal cliff, like what a dramatic way to say this. You know, maybe it gets our attention, but what it does is <laughs> enough people are nervous and feeling some fear that we, I believe, have to counteract that by not buying into the fear uh, that something weird is going to happen. Mm -hmm. We're in a process of massive change. It's pretty, it's, look around. <laughs> 
uh, talk to people. Of course we are, you know. And I think a lot of people are like holding their breath, you know, in fear of, God, oh, what's 2013 going to bring? It's going to bring a lot of changes, but we're already, it's already happening. We're in process. I don't think there's some dramatic event that happened on December 21st or will happen in, from where we're doing this interview now. But I do believe that what's going to come, what's, what's emerging, what's going to come is more heart opening, that we're going to, we're going to bond together much more effectively that again part of my mission certainly is that we're going to appreciate the world that much more and not be afraid of the world it's uh, it's not a scary place you know you don't have to go out you don't have to box yourself in and the changes that are coming there's dramatic the storms etc they're they're increasing etc of course there's a lot of that going to be going on and who knows what else may be going on massive changes but it's all part of this what's been called the shift you know, there's a shift that's going on in human consciousness. And part of that shift, as I said to you earlier, I said it's not an ascension. It's about descending, about developing a relationship, a different sort of relationship with the natural world than the way it's been. It's been one that we dominate and we extract from and we pull from and we use for our purpose. But what about three generations from now? What about seven generations from now? You know, we have to start caring for the world in a different way and relating to the world. I, as I, I said to you earlier, it's not about saving the planet. The planet doesn't need saving. You know, the planet's been around four and a half billion years. Four and a half billion. I can't even get my head around that. And it's going to be around for at least another four and a half billion years. We just need to know how to live with the planet. With and its with the natural world. Yeah. Yes. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Stephen. My pleasure, Lilo. Thank you. You're a gracious, uh, gracious interview and a gracious host. Thank you. With, in this beautiful place, how easy. Much love, my delicious co-creators. We send you many blessings. God we bless. love you. Thank you for sharing those delicious videos. See you very soon. 2013 is here. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>